to be civil maybe thank you hello yes i it is visible right yeah now it isn't okay so we are live now uh, i welcome everyone uh first of all let me introduce myself myself said that when i asked me a district microbiologist saraido a district of assam a state coordinator microbiology society india and also a research scholar from uh, assam dandoskar university i welcome you all and uh, for today's guest lecture series with us we we have a professor dr asia ma'am let me introduce to ma'am uh, ma'am has done her bsc in biochemistry microbiology and uh, biochemistry and msc and phd in biochemistry from nagpur university ma'am is a postdoc from rice university and presently a professor in the department of biological sciences sandeep university nasik with lots of research teaching uh, and administrative experience ma'am has been pi to many projects uh, with lots of awards and recognitions like um, dbt scientist young achievers award by csir selected as as a research scientist uh, sr for phd get qualified and much more uh, ma'am has uh, over uh, 30 publications and uh, currently guiding six uh, phd candidates so it will be less uh, to describe ma'am in um, such a uh, short period of time so we are really very delighted that we have with uh, us ma'am today in her busy schedule also so i think without delaying i can uh, hand over the session to ma'am so ma'am will be topping uh, talking on the topic omics era in bioremediation so ma'am i request you to hand over the session i will be sharing the slides for you thank you for your kind introduction yes ma'am uh let us go ahead and start the talk so although uh, it will be a uh, couple of minutes before we can see the ppt uh, let us start the talk can you all hear me please write in the chat box yes ma'am can you hear me yes yes we can all hear of, you all of you can hear me okay okay so today's talk would be on the topic omics era in bioremediation and this talk uh, this talk will be discussing and addressing various questions which are uh, currently being uh, in, uh, investigated and studied and lot of research scholars are uh, turning to this topic for their phd the word omics it is a latin word and the meaning of omics is analysis of large volume of data sets now uh, i will try to explain in detail why omics science is being implemented in bioremediation aspect what are the requirements and what are the advantages of applying omics science in bioremediation so briefly i will go over the details of bioremediation the principles the uh, 
uh, strategies, various kind of applications, advantages, etc. And I will try to integrate both these aspects, omic science as well as bioremediation. And we will see what is the outcome of these uh, applications, omic applications. So uh, as we all have experienced the money dispensing machine ATM, right? So uh, what does the ATM do? It dispenses the money required for us. Whatever we uh, uh, request, we receive that. So those days are not far off where we will go to a uh, vending machine like ATM or we will go to a uh, micro dispensing machine. I imagine where you would say, I want a microorganism consortia for this as for agricultural purpose or for biotechnological purpose for various uh, pharmaceutical needs etc so uh, the omics era as referred to currently is leading all this data analysis aspect to the artificial intelligence and the way is paved for a much much challenging outcome uh, where we would just think of it and it would appear uh, for application. The most advanced uh, omics applications and artificial intelligence uh, is seen in the medical aspect. As we all are quite aware of the medical challenges, the current application of artificial intelligence in medical uh, genomics, transcriptomics, cancer therapeutics, etc. So even the bioremediation is also taking its toll and trying to give more, try to get more insights into the application of bioremediation. So let me uh, take a glance at the historical aspect. So early in 1990s was the time when the organics derived from human and animal waste were treated. And eventually later on, wastewater treatment, synthetic chemicals from industries, hydrocarbons from petroleum products all started to be treated by this bioremediation process. So what does actually bioremediation mean? Next slide, please. So bioremediation, as the word suggests, bioremediation. Bio means using microorganism, living uh, organisms to solve an environmental pollution, to solve the problems caused due to environmental chemicals which are not natural. Those chemicals which are man-made and dumped into the environment and they are naturally being treated and removed from the environment. So what is the job of microorganism? To detoxify or eliminate the toxic characteristics of those environmental pollutants by converting it into uh, other metabolites or intermediates which are no longer toxic to the environment and does not cause any health hazards to human beings. So this is the simple definition of bioremediation. And in return, what do the bacteria or the microorganism get? They are using these toxic compounds as a source of growth and metabolism. That means they are surviving on this environmental pollutants. So they grow, they metabolize, and they detoxify at the same time. And bioremediation is not only, uh, not only implicating bacteria, but also plants and fungi. 
so we will go ahead with the different types of bioremediation available next slide please yeah so uh, first question is why so much of pollutants exist in the environment and what is the origin of this pollutant as we all are, are aware of the necessity of water in our life which uh, comes from ground ground water so ground water is the main source of water which we receive and there are various uh, industrial companies which keep uh, eliminating their chemicals and due to some accidental events also various pollutants are entering into this particular ground water and finally the water which we receive get contaminated by all this toxic compounds so there are various uh, uh, incidents where the large volume of pollutants have entered the natural sources for example uh, in in the year 2000 when the american and uh, iraq war was going on at that time large volume of oil was spilled into the sea and lot of marine organisms uh, like died and lot of harmful effect was also seen to the Uh, flora to the flora and fauna of the sea so all these events need to be treated otherwise the consequence of all these pollutants will enter the food chain and it will reach to the human system also creating lot of hazards health hazards particularly cancer etc so it needs to be remediated now how can we do how can we tackle this question how can we solve this issue so uh, there comes the role of bioremediation and uh, bioremediation is more eco friendly compared to the other chemical means if we want to do it by chemical means it is more expensive more hazardous and it will generate further secondary chemical which will not be safe for the human existence so being eco friendly and bioremediation is chosen or as a favorable favorable for environment and it is most studied uh, remediation strategies so far so let us go into further details of the type of bioremediation next slide please yeah before going into the types of uh, bioremediation let me uh, introduce you to few terminologies which we frequently use in bioremediation the first one is xenobiotic xenobiotic means a chemical which was not naturally existing in the environment for example insecticide pesticides herbicides which are not natural those are synthetic particularly they are referred to as xenobiotic the second uh, term biomagnification it is just an accumulation of toxic materials in the tissue of organisms mostly ddt is found in various uh plants and organisms and it has entered entered the food chain third one mineralization mineralization is the complete breakdown of a toxic pollutant and uh, liberation of co2 and hto thereby zero existence of the chemical toxic molecule and complete elimination from the environment and the last factor is bio concentration in which the eventual increase in the concentration of pollutant leads to increase of the concentration of uh, pollutant in the organism so these are the various 
terms which are frequently used in bioremediation and these needs to be addressed uh, by using different strategies of bioremediation so for example the level of oil spill will be different and the different level of treatment different strategies of treatment are to be adopted while planning for a bioremediation uh, treatment measures next slide please okay shortly i will go over the principles of bioremediation so uh, principles of bioremediation is based on the fact that certain microorganisms particularly bacteria which is most commonly employed for bioremediation they acquire the genes for metaboli metabolizing a specific chemical for example if we are going and collecting the soil samples from a pharmaceutical industry vicinity and if we are isolating the bacteria from that soil most of the bacteria found whether it is bacillus whether it is pseudomonas whether it is uh, rhodobacterium all these different uh, species of bacteria all the different genus and species of bacteria will acquire the genes or the potential to remediate those compounds which are present in that contaminated soil so a lot of physiological mechanisms do exist when we say that a particular bacteria has the potential to detoxify a compound i will give an example of uh, amino phenol bioremediation where the physiological aspect required to be customized for meta amino phenol degradation required lot of uh, experimentation in terms of the various substrates being utilized by the bacteria the enzymes involved the type of nutrients to be provided to the bacteria for degradation of amino phenol so 50 years back 40 to 50 years back the investigations being done were of more enzymatic studies chemical kinetics enzyme kinetics kinetics of degradation etc and we, and a few experimentations were possible where we could uh, study the role of specific genes but this is how uh like eventually evolution in genomics led to more and more insights uh into the physiological mechanism of bioremediation principle so bacteria fungi protist all are capable of bioremediation but mostly we are uh focusing on the bacterial aspect next slide please next slide please yeah when we refer to environmental pollutants we are not only concerned with the hydrocarbon the uh, nitro compounds nitro aromatics benzene toluenes but at the same time we are also concerned about the metallic contaminations yeah i am getting a question uh, prakash and i would answer this question later on so i was talking about the problems of metal heavy metal contaminants so in in punjab i think there are punjab and certain parts of rajasthan there are some places where the drinking water is is containing a very high concentration of arsenic due to which a lot of 
uh, a major population are facing problems in their um, like problems like joint pain and uh, health hazards related to calcium metabolism phosphorus metabolism magnesium metabolism etc so heavy metals are also causing a, a serious health hazards and uh, those are also remediated by means of bioremediation there are various uh, types of bacteria which are have been investigated so far if i look back uh, from the early 20th century uh, aromatics heavy metal radioactive uh, compounds then uh, even uh, the bacteria which are able to uh, absorb the uh, toxic rays of sun and even the bacteria which are able to metabolize plastics which i will elaborate later on those are being found uh, and they are able to uh, do the bioremediation very effectively next slide please yeah so as i mentioned earlier uh, the mechanism mechanistic aspect of bioremediation is the uh scenario which has gained a lot of attention by the omic science omic science is having lot of oper it has given lot of opportunities but there are also uh, various challenges posed in the omic science we will eventually discuss that but my uh, the currently i will elaborate on what is exactly the process of bioremediation this involve various physiological aspects undergo undergoing like when the bacteria is surviving or sustaining on this toxic pollutants all these toxic pollutants mm -hmm. enter inside the bacteria they are uh, metabolized by specific highly specific enzymes which were not which may not be previously produced when the toxic was uh, absent but as the Then, toxic pollutant adan correct adu edukku avanga edhu toxic pollutant data were off and off and becoming available these enzymes are synthesized in response to the availability of the pollutant and they are eventually breaking down the toxic pollutant and using it as a main carbon source okay so this is metabolism details metabolic aspect and various gene enzymes are involved metabolites are produced various uh, specific proteins are synthesized and if we need to study the entire process of bioremediation we need to have an update and idea about all these levels genomic level transcriptomic levels protein levels and metabolite levels so the advent of omic science plays a very distinguished role here how by making possible all this level of studies in one go whether it is genomic studies whether it is proteomics whether it is transcriptomics whether it is metabolomics so now we have this potential to do all this uh, techniques in one go i think 30 years back uh, we never imagined of having all these techniques uh, possible because at that time there are there were so, so many limitations in sequencing uh, in the year 2003 when human genome was sequenced and from then then onwards the environmental scientists also started dreaming to uh, sequence the entire genome of various potential bacteria and compare all those genome and try to get structural and functional information from those sequences next slide please
Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, coming to the application of bioremediation, there are two ways by which we can achieve this. Okay, one is in situ bioremediation, which is actually on site bioremediation. So, wherever the contaminant exists, whether it is a water body or soil surface, we can introduce the potential microorganisms at that particular site and provide more nutrients, more oxygen, and we can decontaminate that site. The second process is ex situ bioremediation. Ex situ bioremediation means what we are actually doing, we are transferring the site, contaminated site, in which we are transferring the soil which is contaminated to another region and we are providing the potential bacteria, nutrient, temperature, moisture, humidity, etc. So, uh, both, the, uh, both these methods are applicable depending upon the need, depending upon the need of treatment. Both these methods have certain advantages and limitations but omics has uh, added more advantages to both in situ and ex, ex situ methods for example in in situ methods there might be uh, as it is a natural system there might be th thousands of bacteria existing in that contaminated site so in laboratory conditions it is not practically possible to i study each and uh, every uh, bacteria individually but the Metagenomics. Metagenomics is the term which is used when we are applying the genomic study to the environment. So there comes the meta word. So metagenomics means the genomics of entire microbial population existing at a particular site. So metagenomic studies allows us to identify the diversity of microbial population at that particular site. Same can be extended to X C2 bioremediation. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, uh, in situ bioremediation is, uh, although it is more direct application of remediation, uh, the In-situ methods allows a more uh, natural way of remediation and we can even do some bio-augmentation by increasing the microbial population uh, at that particular site. And we can also introduce a consortia. Consortia means uh, multiple, it is a population of multiple microorganisms which have been optimized for detoxification of a particular pollutant. So there are two types of in situ bioremediation. One is intrinsic and one is in engineered. Intrinsic means natural methodology, natural approach. And next slide, uh, in the next slide, we can also see the advantages and disadvantages of these two methods, in situ and ex situ methods. So although the in situ method uh, is uh, very, very uh, e uh, like eco uh, cost effective, but it is a very slow process in the sense that we are not introducing any uh, any like uh, special microorganism, but we are ut exploiting the natural microbial population present in that contaminated site. And uh, still in the present scenario, there are various uh, bioremediation treatments uh, being adopted in in situ way. Next slide, please. Uh, now, as we are all uh, like doing, uh, do, de as we all are dealing with various kind of experimentation in our laboratory, we are very well aware of the fact that the the experiments the practicals which appear so easy in the laboratory conditions when they are uh, extrapolated in the field conditions they become 
quite challenging why it is challenging because in the field conditions we have to deal with so many different variations of temperature of uh, the soil sample the nutrients the interaction between the soil uh, com the humid components hum there are so many humic components present in the soil particles so we are making it more no voice madam ma'am your please voice is not audible please unmute madam pardon me pardon me your voice is not there okay hello now now now, now it's okay, okay. Now it's okay. yes yes audible audible fine yes, fine yes, so yeah i will repeat what i was saying i was saying that in x t2 bioremediation we are facing more challenges because what we are doing we are simulating the conditions which are existing naturally the conditions of temperature um uh, the soil conditions which are existing naturally is quite different from what we provide in the laboratory when we extend this experiment experimentation in the laboratory we call it as a simulation study so in the simulation this ex situ bioremediation is like a simulate simulation study is where we transfer all the pollutant uh, the pollutant affected soil or water sample and we bring it to the laboratory for treatment so it has its own advantages the most important an advantage of having ex situ bioremediation measure is that we can augment the experiment by adding potential microbial strain and we can also introduce certain nutrients we can provide the temperature optimum we can provide more oxygen and we we will try to facilitate this ex situ bioremediation so that these also has been employed very widely if you look around the world uh, where various kinds of this explosive in the defense facilities where so many explosive compounds are being used and uh, uh, spread so there mostly ex situ bioremediation is method of choice and uh, lot of uh, lot of success has also been obtained uh, in case of ex ex situ bioremediation next slide please yeah but it also has certain limitations this being very costly uh, process uh, it is uh, it depends upon the availability of the funding etc and uh, we are also uh, doing some changes in the site of contamination and uh, after x c2 bioremediation the challenge is that where are you going to dispose the the uh, contaminated material like for example if 60% uh, treatment is achieved or or 70% treatment is achieved what about the remaining uh, uh, level of pollutants present in that contaminated soil etc so uh, it is not impossible but various kind of a strategies has to be adopted for complete bioremediation in such cases next slide please yeah i will shortly briefly go over aerobic and uh, anaerobic bioremediation aerobic bioremediation involves uh, the involvement of oxygen and there is complete breakdown of the toxic pollutants uh, by oxidation process mainly um, uh, dioxygenases enzymes and monooxygenases enzymes are involved in this process which are uh, like dependent upon oxygen and uh, anaerobic process on the other hand it does not require uh, the presence of oxygen but there are certain other uh, mechanistic aspect like hydrogenation dehalogenation and uh, carboxylation reactions does occur under anaerobic uh, bioremediation the main difference being that 
इन एरोबिक बायोरेमेडिएशन ऑक्सीजन सर्व एस ए टर्मिनल इलेक्ट्रॉन एक्सेप्टर वेर एस इन केस ऑफ एनरोबिक बायोरेमेडिएशन नाइट्रेट विल यूजली सर्व एस एन इलेक्ट्रॉन एक्सेप्टर सो दिस इज द मेन डिफरेंट एंड बोथ दिस बायोरेमेडिएशन मेथड्स विल लीड टू जनरेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट मेटाबोलिक प्रोडक्ट्स नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज yeah this is what i just explained so uh, during uh, during this process uh, in parallel what happens is that the bacteria uh, gains energy from this metabolism and it increases the biomass so there is increase in population of the bacteria which is doing this process and it continues to grow and metabolize next next slide please. yeah uh, so strategies uh, regarding the strategies adopted uh, i would uh, like to mention here that so as as there are various different kinds of pollutant different kinds of strategies are adopted for all the petroleum and the uh, products of petroleum the pollutant involved is hydrocarbons like xylene naphthalene octane camphor all these are petroleum uh, toxicants and the all these molecules are hydrocarbon so one very interesting uh, story uh, i would like to share here so uh, dr anand chakravarti is uh, one of the uh, very uh, reputed reputed molecular biologist so he was trying to uh, study the involvement of plasmids in the bioremediation of hydrocarbon so uh, next slide please next slide please yeah so uh, he tried to degrade the molecule xylene and naphthalene by two different uh, bacteria harboring different genes so xylene was present in uh, one of the plasmid present in one bacteria and the naphthalene gene was present in second microorganism second bacteria but when he was trying to put all both these plasmid together in one bacteria so there was uh, some recombination events happening and this uh, construct or this uh bacteria the combinant bacteria was not successful in metabolizing xylene and naphthalene but when he tried to introduce octane gene containing plasmid and camphor gene containing plasmid uh as well as xylene and naphthalene containing plasmids which he was studying earlier he wo he was able to uh obtain success in metabolizing all these uh, hydrocarbons so what he concluded was that this uh, prevented the recombination events which he found earlier when uh, octane and cam genes were present in the respective plasmids so this this was this led to creation of a a uh, super bug like a multiple plasmid containing bacteria and was found successful in treatment of uh, oil hydrocarbons next slide please next slide please yeah uh, as i told earlier there are various strategies being adopted when waste water treatment or ground water treatment are to be done uh, next slide please so the strategies uh, adopted will involve the three stage treatment first will be the primary treatment in which what is what is the main step followed the uh, entire waste water is collected and uh, allowed to uh like settle all the sediments present in the waste water is allowed to set, settle 
and then they are removed whereas now the clear water at the top level is transferred to secondary treatment stage where the biological treatment procedure is applied and there the activated sludge activated sludge is uh, included and the waste water is, is passed to the activated sludge which leads to decontamination of various uh, synthetic chemicals organic molecules present in the waste water and ultimately in the third stage the water is purified and recycled so this is the treatment strategy followed and most of the waste water can be purified and recycled next slide please next slide please next slide please yeah one of more uh, one of the most uh, astonishing application of uh, this treatment of industrial waste is that the waste can also be converted into energy like electricity or it could be converted into fertilizers or it could be uh, converted into uh, like various industrially important chemical so how all these uh, uh, processes are possible by means of potential bacteria having the ability having the genes having the enzymes to bring about this detoxification of pollutants so uh, more and more applications and utilizations of this waste into energy waste into uh, commercially important molecules can be achieved by bioremediation process next slide please yeah this is the generation of electricity next slide please yeah this is uh, phytoremediation is the terminology given when we are using plants to carry out the remediation the, but the major limitation of phytoremediation is that this kind of remediation can be done only for the surface soil if the pollutant is uh, located in the surface soil then only we can utilize plants as a uh, treatment uh, like we can utilize plants as a treatment for uh, detoxifying the pollutants next slide please one very interesting uh, next slide please one very interesting application of uh, plants remediation i have seen uh, near the nagpur there is a manganese ore dump site which was barren land for Uh, three almost three decades which was lying as a barren land without any plants but one uh, one of the scientists environmental scientist he uh, put lot of efforts and he tried to uh, change the fertility of soil by introducing various uh, plants in that area and eventually that barren land was converted into a very highly fertile land and it was turned into a green uh, like area from a barren line so phytoremediation has also uh, been successful next slide please yeah micro remediation is an another strategy that the uh, fungi the fungi used is uh, they this has the potential the potential enzymes to transform the pollutant into less toxic or non toxic uh, products and the structural aspect of my um, fungi like mycelium they can also be used as a filter to remove the toxic waste uh, from water or soil next slide please yeah i will be focusing more on the omics part here 
next slide please yeah so uh, this flow diagram is uh, giving an illustration of the fact that suppose we have a microbial community omics technique allows us to identify the bacteria present in community the diversity of microbial population how we can do that we can extract the dna from this uh, soil sample we can get the uh, the dna sequence and we can identify by metagenomics what kind of microbial community do exist so similarly at the level of rna we can do the transcriptomic study of the microbial community first we will isolate the dna we will convert it into the rna and then we will do the uh, like metagenomics comparison and we will try try to correlate the proteins being produced from this rna we will confirm it by the uh, technique of proteomics and also by uh, the presence of metabolites corresponding metabolites present in that microbial uh, community and all these aspect will give an idea about the complete geno genomic potential of that microbial community and how we can exploit that potential for bioremediation process yeah i will answer the questions later on at the end of the session please next slide please yeah so uh, suppose we have a natural uh, ecosystem so what are the options available for us to uh, apply omics so by environmental genomics we can identify which are the bacteria present what they are doing and uh, what which kind of structural genes are present which kind of functional genes are present based on the functional genomics we can uh, determine the functional aspect of those bacterial cultures and depending upon the functional characteristic we can use that uh, for our own needs for our own biotechnological applications next slide please and oh, how will we define metabolomics so whenever a toxic pollutant is metabolized it gets converted into various metabolites and these metabolites depend upon the type of enzymes for example if catechol if if for example if phenol is present then phenol will be converted into catechol catechol and then catechol will be converted into uh, further uh, ring cleavage compound that ring cleavage compound will be further converted into smaller molecules likewise as uh, like uh, likewise any particular contaminant will be getting converted into the simpler metabolites as produced by the enzymes involved so when we put together all these different stages of metabolites we can we can determine the metabolic pathway of that particular toxic pollutant step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 which are the intermediates formed and from that we can identify the various physiological mechanisms existing for detoxification of that pollutant in that particular natural system next slide please yeah this uh, this is a uh, slide which gives complete picture of what is achievable by application of omics science we can identify the new genes uh, introduced into the bacteria from the environment we can identify the new proteins produced by those uh, genes we can identify the metabolites produced by those uh, uh, transformation of those pollutants so uh, 
like in a nutshell we can say that uh, omics has given us more opportunity and it has given us physiological mechanisms leading to bioremediation so many steps involved in bioremediation was considered uh, as hypothetical and we used to investigate hypothetically which and these hypothetical investigations led to more number of experiments more tedious process very slow a lot of time consuming, consuming but omics allow us to see complete picture in one go so i hope uh, you would uh, have uh, tried to like uh, uh, see the advantages of omics in the field of bioremediation and many of you would like to explore uh, the omics applications not only in bioremediation but varied aspect of microbial physiology so uh, i would like to thanks and i would like to uh, address any questions good afternoon madam saida madam good afternoon good afternoon yes tell me please i am from chhatrapati sambhaji nagar maharashtra uh, yes uh, whatever the consortia is there if we used yes. for a small scale not commercial level so wherever yeah. the dump particles uh, or uh, whatever the uh, that is uh, uh, pollutants are there if we uh, use yeah. this consortia particular area yeah. uh, is yeah. that uh, uh, feasible to reduce the chemicals uh, and clean up the area of course of course for that what you have to do first you have to do a simulation study in your laboratory what you can do you can bring the contaminated soil in your lab and you can introduce the consortia at a very high cell density and allow the the process to occur by providing certain nutrition nutrients like nitrogen source and uh, giving more oxygen and you can see the uh, disappearance or degradation of the pollutants by following various analytical techniques and it is definitely going to give you an idea how can uh, how far you can apply this under the field conditions okay madam but the rate so is very conditions. but the way rate is very slow so how will we increase this rate to clean up particular See, area which get uh, contaminated with the pollutant yeah so uh, there are various strategies of doing that you first you, you can do bio augmentation bio augmentation means introducing those uh, consortia which are able to survive in that uh, environment first you should see which bacteria are survivable for survival of those microorganisms which substrates which nitrogen source which carbon source you can provide and maintain a healthy density of microbial population and if the microbial population is being maintained then definitely it the reaction will continue and you will get the expected result okay madam thank you very much very interesting topic madam an excellent lecture by you uh, one more thank thing you. i want to uh, quote you that is the if you are interested to take the uh, project with you is it uh, possible sure. Sure, sure. You are welcome. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, madam. Thanks. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. This is Bharat Krishna from University of Madras. Yes. Tell me, please. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Good, 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 good afternoon, ma'am. Like you have mentioned, like we can, like uh, administering this GMOs in bioremediation, right? Yes, genetically modified organism. It is, it is like, uh, like degradation of hydrocarbon sector is a highly regulated kind of thing. Repeat it, please. Degra what? Um, what did you say? Actually, you have mentioned like uh, using GMOs for remediation of these hydrocarbons. Uh, 
yeah. you have quoted in one slide you have quoted so this uh, bioremediation of hydrocarbon is highly regulated kind of sector ma'am so exactly. is it eth ethical to use gmos in bioremediation process ma'am yeah uh, gmos are allowed to use in contained systems contained okay, system not in means you are uh, not on site on site seal condition you cannot use but in contained system like like i explained you the x to uh bioremediation step in that you can uh, still do it okay ma'am okay okay yeah thank you thank you you can get me uh, get in touch with me if you have any more questions sure ma'am sure 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 thank you any more questions madam very good presentation compliments for that I'm happy to know that uh, your doctorate is from nagpur nagpur university yes 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 niri But niri Oh, who was the guide by the way? Is it uh, Dr. Purohit? Yes, sir. Oh, very good. Congratulations. In fact, I am from Nagpur, but I am now in CFTR in Mysore. Oh, great! And it was actually interesting uh, that phyto remediation which you were explaining. Yeah. That was uh, in way which area by the way, and which kind of plants they have used? Yeah, uh, those were bamboo trees, sir. Okay. and yeah it is near, located near uh, exactly uh, i can give you more details later but uh, okay. it was li like uh, 40 50 kilometers from nagpur okay so this just a surrounding somewhere maybe umred or uh, ramtek area yeah just wanted no waters otherwise uh, no this kind of conjurshi are available now for hydrocarbon degradation we knows and then yeah. what we use uh, some conserva for this bio toilet right but for suppose yes. the acre yet the manure uh, decomposition no such commercially yeah. available conserva are, are there uh, many biotech companies are venturing into this aspect sir for manure purpose many biotech companies yeah yeah and many uh -huh. many small scale many scale, like uh, small uh, startups have started and uh, uh, yeah i can give you more details uh, later like uh, i can give you the names of people who are starting this definitely definitely thank you thank you very much thank you thank you uh there is a question coming up is there any known cultures uh, for specific type of bioremediation uh, there are various cultures available in the uh, nccs the culture collection there are various cultures available also which people have deposited uh, and you can go through that catalog and see which one do you need uh <clears throat> hello hello uh can you listen me yes yeah uh, so i would like to know like uh, you are highlighting about the omics uh, uh no, i'm not sure how much depth you have reached in this area but uh, i want to get awareness like uh, are you like um, proposing some specific enzymes and then characterizing them and then doing some immobilization and then using the enzymes in the environment kind of studies so that when so with the use of omics okay गेनिंग मोर इन इन टूरक्टराइजेशन ऑफ दिन Involved mm -hmm. in plastic remediation. Mm -hmm. uh, so such, uh, so far, so far, I have not done a, any mobilization studies, but okay, okay. Uh, so, I am uh, trying to do more bioinformatic uh, approaches for. Uh, okay. Like related... So you are using that omic approach for uh, uh, character, not characterization. I can say the structural identification of that yeah. enzymes like that. I mean, so how you are going to using that omic approach with this enzymes? I want to know. 
I am go. I am what I am. I have planned so far Simple is uh, I have studied the functional Simple aspects of those Simple enzymes. Right. I I know functionally what those enzymes are doing. Okay. There are known enzymes. So now I will be uh, exploring the enzymes in other species. Okay. So you identified some bacteria or some fungi and you want to identify the same enzymes in the other species. Yes, yes. That is the approach you are following. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, when I uh, like uh, I read about the topic, the omics, I, I, I had uh, like um, impression that you will be focusing more about the omics work, what you are uh, like an in-depth analysis of the data and all that you will show. So I was uh, thinking in that way, like what kind okay, of uh, okay. separations of proteins. Okay. Yeah, and that, uh, those, that omics part uh, of plastic degradation is uh, currently under investigation. So I am <laughs> not much uh, much elaborated on that. Yes, okay, yes. So your lab is uh, like uh, you don't have a functional laboratory for omics if I uh, I'm not misunderstanding, right? Yes, yeah, we are outsourcing actually. You are outsourcing the samples, huh? That was the like uh, huh. okay, I understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Like I worked on omics areas previously, so okay. um, using the Maldives and this uh, orbit traps and all that. So I was curious to know yeah. how exactly like in-depth analysis you people are doing for this bioremediations and all that, like a small molecule, how you are going to characterizing and all, and how these small like uh, entities are degraded and then then how you want to use these entities for the further, like uh, if you degrade yeah. one molecule uh, and then... Actually, uh -huh. actually my previous lab uh, was doing all this. So uh, I am like, I have an idea. Uh, maybe we can discuss later. Okay, fine. I'm located in Evla. In case I visit Nasik, I will meet you for sure. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Madam, do you have any consortia for a plastic degradation, by the way? Yes, uh, consortia is there. Uh, not yet completely, uh, like uh, it has been done, identified mm -hmm. in 16S, but we are still optimizing the consortia. Okay. Mostly they are bacteria or fungi? Uh, bacteria. No, you don't use right? Pardon me? You don't use any fungal source? Fungal, uh, fungal... Fungals are also there, but uh, I am focusing on... I Mostly. have isolated both bacteria as well as fungi, but I am focusing more on uh, the bacterial conversion. And what, what was the source of this bacteria, by the way? It was a dump site, sir. Soil sample only. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if there if there is no more question, I Hello, would like good, to good morning, thank madam. you all. Good morning. Hello, good morning, madam. Good morning. Uh, madam, I am Batula Narsimlu from NDRI Karnal. Okay. Madam, this uh, same problem is uh, happen with uh, way while uh, treating uh, the paneer and cheese. Okay. So it is uh, one of the major pollutant uh, in dairy industry. So this uh, omic, uh, omic based approaches can reduce that pollution, ma'am? Uh, yeah, based on the contaminant present, based on the uh, system, uh, we, can, uh, we can develop and we can design a strategy. Madam, already some some strategies are there, but uh, it is not working that much. Uh, up to, um, means whatever our desire level, it is not uh, yeah. degrading that much level. So how we can uh, increase the efficiency of that uh, existing technologies? Yeah, we can discuss this in later because I need to know uh, which strategies you are focusing on, 
and uh, what all things are involved in the strategy i can uh, i can uh, comment based on the the details of that strategy i can suggest something this we can talk later is it possible okay madam okay sure madam thank you okay okay, okay. can we leave the session madam yes so if there is no more question i would like to thank you all and conclude this session that uh, any more questions if no there more can, questions, you can ask me yeah i think we are uh, we came to the end of the session so ma'am it was a really very great lecture by you from the beginning of bioremediation in simple words uh, related to pollutants health hazard and importance of bioremediation and your terms related to bioremediation everything was uh, very minutely and detailedly explained it is very helpful for all the students researchers and also someone who is working on bioremediation so they can also personally contact you uh, i'd like sure, to take sure. a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude to you ma'am for joining us today and sharing all your knowledge related to bioremediation and omics so it's been a it's been a very enlightened and enriching experience for all of us so i think uh, with this we shall um, end uh, today's session thank okay. you everyone thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you for all yes. your help and support